Hi everyone, in this video, we're looking at transport layer. Transport layer is responsible for logical communications between applications running on different hosts. It also acts as the link between the application layer and the lower layers. So it becomes the interface between the application and the network and data link layer. So some of the responsibilities of the transport layer include tracking individual conversations, segmenting data and reassembling segments, adding header information, identifying, separating, and managing multiple conversations, and also uses the segmentation and multiplexing to enable different communication conversations to be interleaved on the same network. So this is where the transport layer is. It's on top of the network layer. So when we want to send data, the IP protocol does not have any specification about how we want to transport this data. So ini tugas dijalankan oleh the transport layer. Dalam transport layer, kita ada dua main protocol which is TCP and UDP. So, bergantung kepada keadaan data ataupun characteristics of the data, we can send either in a reliable and connection-oriented transportation protocol ataupun on an unreliable and uh, connection-less transportation. So, dekat transport layer, kita ada dua main protocol. The first one is the transmission control protocol or TCP. So, characteristics utama TCP adalah dia adalah satu reliable and uh, connection-oriented transport layer protocol. So, bila dia nak hantar data, the basic unit of data is called a segment. And uh, since it is a reliable protocol, dia akan track the individual data segments dengan cara meletakkan sequence number. So it numbers and track the data segments when it transmits to the destination. And to make sure that the data is safely delivered, uh, it uses acknowledgement. Okay, so any destination that safely receives data will send an acknowledgement back to the source. Kalau data yang being dropped disebabkan keadaan traffic uh, ataupun congestion, uh, so, it is the duty of the source to retransmit this data. So, cara dia nak detect macam mana data tu dah hilang ataupun being dropped adalah apabila source tidak terima acknowledgement. So, it retransmits any unacknowledged data. And dia akan gunakan timer uh, dipanggil retransmission time out. So, first time dia hantar data, dia akan turn on this timer. So, dia set kepada a certain amount of time lah. For example, 5 seconds. And it waits for an acknowledgement. Kalau dalam masa 5 seconds tu, timer dah kosong. Maksudnya, dia tak terima lagi acknowledgement. So, data tu maybe hilang lah. Lost ataupun drop along the way. So, the source will retransmit this data. Okay. So, macam mana dia keep track data yang mana yang tak diterima itu? Uh, sebab dia dah number, so dia ada sequence number. So now, uh, bila dia hantar, since kita akan melalui dekat network layer, kita akan melalui IP. So kita boleh lalu beberapa path ataupun route yang berbeza untuk data daripada source dan ke destination yang sama. So the data mungkin akan arrive out of order. Jadi dekat transport layer juga, siapa yang run TCP, dia gunakan sequence number itu untuk reassemble the data. Ha, inilah cara TCP make sure that the data is reliable and has integrity. Okay, and uh, TCP will send the data at an efficient rate and it should be acceptable by the receiver supaya receiver ready untuk terima data dan receiver tak akan drop data bila berlaku congestion. So, mechanism ini yang efficient rate and is acceptable by the receiver sebenarnya kita kategorikan dia sebagai flow control mechanism. 
So dekat TCP antara servis yang dia offer adalah flow control lah. So you will see later when we touch about UDP. UDP is a transport layer protocol that does not have any flow control mechanism. So now let's look at the UDP or user datagram protocol. So tujuan UDP ada adalah basically just to transport um, applications yang tidak memerlukan uh, time sensitivity uh, ataupun dia tak perlu acknowledgement lah. So it sends the data from application that has very little overhead and data checking. So dari segi, dari segi ini kita boleh kategorikan UDP sebagai a connectionless and unreliable protocol. Okay, so unreliable nama dia yang lain adalah best effort delivery protocol. So berbeza dengan TCP where we must make sure the data is safely arrives at the receiver. Dengan cara hantar acknowledgement back to the source. Untuk UDP, dia tak ada mekanism acknowledgement ni. Okay, so dia hanya hantar sahaja. So, sama ada data diterima atau tidak oleh receiver, uh, kita tak tahu. Uh, it just assumes that the data safely arrives lah. Jadi, mekanism untuk uh, make sure data tu diterima, diberi kepada uh, protokol di layer lain. Contohnya di layer application. Okay, so apa-apa protokol yang menggunakan UDP di transport layer, maksudnya mekanism untuk make sure the data safely arrives is not on the responsibility of the UDP. UDP di sini tujuan dia untuk transport the data fast. Nah, jadi dia nak hantar messages-messages yang laju dan pendek selalunya. Okay, kalau ada masalah mengenai Uh, reliability ataupun slow control dan sebagainya dekat UDP dia tak handle, dia akan pastikan responsibility ini dekat layer lain. So, apakah jenis application yang sesuai untuk gunakan UDP ataupun TCP? Uh, disebabkan karakteristik dia yang berbeza, kita akan tengok kategori application layer protocol yang sesuai untuk menggunakan each of this transport layer. Okay, so contoh untuk UDP, contoh application adalah voice over IP dan juga domain name system or DNS. Okay, so kenapa? Sebab jenis uh, data yang digunakan oleh protokol ini memerlukan transmission of data which is fast, has low overhead, does not require acknowledgement, does not resend lost data and also delivers data as it arrives. Delivers data as it arrives maksudnya bila dia sampai kepada sesuatu port, dia immediately hantar semula forward data tu kepada the next destination. Dia tak ada buat checking. Ada error checking, tak ada flow control, tak ada acknowledgement. So tujuan dia adalah untuk application-application yang memerlukan data yang dihantar cepat. So, characteristics data dalam voice over IP contohnya adalah kita punya voice. Uh, kita kita nak cakap telefon menggunakan human voice by over the data network. So, bila kita cakap, kita mesti ada real time characteristics kan. Kalau kita cakap dan sampai lambat dekat receiver, the data is already unreliable. It's not real time. Jadi, sesuailah dia gunakan UDP untuk transport layer protocol dia. Okay, untuk DNS juga, so DNS is a protocol that resolves the domain name to an IP. Jadi dia tak ada banyak data, dia tak ada banyak uh, details yang perlu dihantar dalam sesuatu uh, paket. So untuk dihantar dengan cepat sebab kita nak resolve uh, domain name kepada IP ni dengan laju. Uh, let's say uh, we want to browse to a web page uh, on our browser. We type in uh, the name, the domain name, for example, www.google.com. So we want to get the IP address for this Google server very quick sebab kita nak download the Google homepage quickly. Uh, okay, user akan complain kan kalau lambat buat proses resolution ni dan page tu lambat. Okay, okay. jadi sesuailah gunakan DNS uh, untuk uh, UDP transport layer protocol. Okay. So next kita tengok TCP. So banding dengan UDP, TCP uh, dia mementingkan connectivity, connection oriented dengan reliability. 
Jadi contoh application yang sesuai untuk TCP adalah uh, for example our email. Okay, SMTP and IMAP is the protocol used for sending and receiving emails. Okay, so email adalah sesuatu uh, data yang kita baca dan kalau data tu hilang jadi maklumat tu tidak lengkap, right? Jadi kita mesti make sure data tu dihantar completely. Okay, completely means keseluruhan dan email. Contohlah email, kita mesti ada sequence lah. Uh, okay, uh, tak boleh lah kita punya email tu, uh, kita punya title first and then uh, signature tengah-tengah uh, and then isi dekat last. Uh, so, dia mesti ikut turutan. Jadi, ini adalah mengikut characteristics TCP. Another one is when we access a web page, okay, the web page must be in the proper format. So that means bila kita transmit data, data tu tak boleh arrive out of order. So we must make sure the transport layer protocol that we use makes sure the data drive, uh, arrives safely and is in sequence or in order. Okay, jadi sebab karakteristik TCP adalah it is a reliable transport layer uh, type of application yang macam ni uh, HTTP, HTTPS, SMTP dan IMAP sesuai untuk gunakan TCP. Okay, so lagi bila dia kata reliable sebab TCP ada acknowledgement mechanism and if the data is lost it has a mechanism to retransmit ataupun resend and it has the mechanism for sequentially ordering the data segments. Okay, let's look at a little bit detail about TCP. So the features of TCP includes TCP establishes a session. So like I said, TCP is a connection oriented protocol. Jadi sebelum dia hantar data, dia mesti uh, inform dahulu the destination. So in essence, kita boleh kata sebagai dia try to negotiate and establish a permanent connection or nama lain session between the source and destination device. So, itu sebelum dia hantar. So, dia make sure the destination is ready to receive data dan dia dah tahu dah jalan mana or the path or the route that it takes to send the data. Okay. So, next it ensures reliable delivery. Again, kita dah tengok cara dia adalah dengan menggunakan sequence number dan juga acknowledgement mechanism. So, uh, provides same order delivery pun samalah dengan menggunakan sequence number. And it supports flow control. So, kita make sure kalau kita adalah source, kita make sure destination kita boleh proses data yang kita hantar. So, dia make sure the speed at which the data that we send is acceptable for the destination to process. Kita tak nak destination to be overwhelm ataupun processor dia penuh ataupun buffer dia penuh. Kalau buffer penuh ke processor tu uh, lambat proses data nanti data yang sampai akan drop. Ha, so kita tak nak sebab TCP ni nak ensure reliability. Ha, jadi kita ada something called flow control uh, where dalam flow control destination tu boleh inform the source how much buffer it has ataupun how much processing power lah how much data you can send sebelum saya punya resources overwhelm. Let's look at the TCP segment itself. So, dekat setiap layer, dia ada dia punya own header. So, for TCP, kita tengok header dia. So, ada beberapa field yang penting dalam TCP. The first two adalah source port and destination port. So, these two fields adalah untuk, untuk identify what is the application that is using the transport layer uh, TCP. Okay. So, source and destination port number ni lah yang identify what is the application that we are sending. What kind of data yang kita sedang hantar menggunakan transport layer TCP ni. Next is the most important, one of the most important feature of TCP adalah dia ada 32-bit sequence number field. Sequence number, like I said, this is for 
numbering the different segments so that they arrive in order. Acknowledgement number is another field that is important. It is to acknowledge the data that has safely arrived. Dan acknowledgement number ni mempunyai sifat cumulatif. Maksudnya, kalaulah destination dah terima uh, segmen bernombor 33. Contoh, so uh, the destination will send the acknowledgement number 34. Ha, cumulative di situ maksudnya dia akan hantar the sequence number uh, that it is expecting to receive. So the acknowledgement number will be greater than the sequence number. Next, kita ada header length. Okay, so header length ni diperlukan sebab header TCP ini size-nya adalah variable. Okay, so variable di sini maksudnya the uh, mandatory fields adalah sebanyak 20 byte tetapi field header ni juga ada field bernama options. Options ini adalah untuk tambah important or extra information sekiranya perlu. So kalaulah uh, field ini ada, uh, maksudnya kita kena inform the destination how long is the header sebab dia kalau tak the destination will only read the first 20 bytes as header dan seterusnya dia akan anggap data. Okay, so untuk destination tak mistakenly read the option field as part of the data. So kita ada header length field. Basically, the header length can range from 20 bytes to 20 plus 32 ataupun 52 bytes. Next, kita ada reserved field tak digunakan. Then kita ada control bits. So, control bits ni juga penting sebab dalam ni kita letak flag. Flag itu menandakan what kind of TCP segment it is. Okay, contoh kita ada TCP segment untuk synchronization. Kita ada TCP segment untuk acknowledgement dan sebagainya. So, kita letak dekat the control bits. Ini lagi satu field yang penting diberi nama window ataupun window size. So, since kita punya TCP transmission adalah full duplex, jadi uh, the this window size boleh letak the value of the header ataupun the value of the buffer uh, how much a particular station can handle before it is being overwhelmed. Next is checksum. So, this is used for error checking. Okay, so remember that it is a reliable protocol, so it wants to incorporate the error detection uh, untuk detect sama ada data sudah berubah ataupun tidak. So, field ini mandatory untuk protokol yang menggunakan TCP. Okay, kita akan tengok nanti dekat UDP. Dia ada checksum juga, tapi it is not mandatory. Field urgent uh, adalah satu lagi karakteristik TCP di mana Kalau ada data yang perlu dihantar dengan lebih cepat, for example, we have voice data over regular data, we can put this field uh, urgent, we can turn on this field to indicate that this data is important dan kalau berlaku congestion, this data can potong queue. Ha, kita boleh hantar data yang ada field urgent ni dahulu berbanding dengan data yang tak ada enable field urgent. Finally, kita ada options like I said, extra information yang perlu kita letakkan untuk TCP berfungsi. So, contohnya dalam TCP, uh, dia tak ada, bukan saja ada acknowledgement, dia juga ada selective acknowledgement. Jadi, kita akan letak information itu di options. Next, setel selepas uh, this option adalah the actual data that is coming from the application layer. So, kita boleh juga summarize kan TCP ini sebagai this description. It handles all tasks associated with dividing the data stream into segments, providing reliability, controlling data flow and also reordering segments. Jadi, ini adalah application-application yang sesuai yang menggunakan TCP. Okay. So, kita ada HTTP, 
or HTTPS, FTP, SMTP, SSH. Ada berbagai lagi tetapi uh, I hope you understand the characteristics of the application layer protocol yang sesuai untuk menggunakan TCP. Next, let's look at UDP. So, antara characteristics UDP adalah data is reconstructed in the order that it is received. Kita tak ada mechanism sequence number jadi macam mana data tu diterima macam tu lah destination or receiver akan susun. Any segments that are lost are not resent. So, kalau ada data yang hilang, destination tidak ada cara untuk hantar signal kepada source supaya retransmit data itu. Okay, so daripada sini lagi kita dah boleh katakan bahawa uh, characteristics of the application layer protocol yang sesuai untuk gunakan UDP as a transport layer protocol adalah application yang mungkin uh, boleh jika ada data yang hilang. So maksudnya dia ada cara untuk compensate uh, this lost data. Also, there is no session establishment. So berbanding dengan TCP, sebelum dia hantar, dia kena ada connection establishment dulu. Dia kena bagi signal dulu kepada destination uh, yang mengatakan, uh, please make sure you are ready. I'm trying to send data. Okay. So the sending is not informed about resource availability. Ini maksudnya, there is no way where the destination can inform the source how much buffer it has or how much resource it has ready to process the data that is being sent. Jadi daripada situ, kita boleh bandingkanlah dengan TCP. Kalau tak ada semua feature itu, maksudnya dalam header dia pun tak ada lah. Dia tak ada sequence number, dia tak ada acknowledgement number, dia tak ada window size, dia tak ada flags. Okay? Sebab dia adalah connectionless and unreliable transport layer protocol. Jadi inilah header dia yang very simple. Dia hanyalah 8 byte. Okay, so kita hanya ada source port number, destination port number untuk bagi tahu what kind of application layer protocol yang sedang menggunakan UDP. Dia ada length dan juga dia ada checksum. Dan checksum ini untuk error detect the uh, header dan juga the data. Tetapi it's not compulsory to enable the checksum. So these are some of the applications that are suitable to use UDP. Okay, so kita ada live video and multimedia applications. So these live applications can tolerate some data loss but require little or no delay. Ha, so, dia time sensitive. Dia delay sensitive. Maksudnya, kalau live video, bolehlah lambat. Alright? So, kita kena tengok real time. Tetapi, kalau ada data loss, uh, jadi kita mungkin katalah kita sebagai viewer, kita sedang view streaming or live video, bila data loss sedikit, kita akan nampak contoh Uh, video kita uh, tak clear ataupun uh, berkaca-kaca. Uh, jadi maksudnya humans can still tolerate as long as the video is still real time. Uh, right? So kita itulah jenis data yang sesuai. It is delay sensitive but it can tolerate some data loss. Another kind of application is simple request and reply applications. So contoh ini adalah DNS and DHCP. So, dia hantar short messages untuk dapatkan information dan uh, request information. Okay, jadi sesuai lah sebab dia tak perlu hantar data yang banyak and does not need any sequence number. Mungkin data dia hanya short saja, jadi tak perlukan reassembly yang akan buat data tu arrive out of order. Another one, like I said, Kalau UDP tak ada mekanisme untuk flow control, error control, connection establishment dan sebagainya, dia akan paskan responsibility ini kepada protokol dekat application layer. Jadi kalau application tu dekat layer application sendiri, dia dah ada reliability and connection orientedness mekanisme. 
Ha, jadi sesuailah dia gunakan UDP untuk transport layer. Okay, so example ini adalah SNMP and TFTP. So it already has the error recovery, acknowledgement, error detection mechanism dekat dia punya own application layer. Okay, so ni lah contoh kita punya application yang menggunakan UDP. We have DHCP, DNS, SMP, TFTP, Voice over IP, Video Conference. Let's look at the port numbers which is used by the transport layer protocol. Since the transport layer ada capability untuk multiplex, maksudnya gabungkan beberapa jenis data dalam satu transmission, kita ada capability of differentiating between the different application layer protocols menggunakan port number. So the source port number is associated with the originating application on the local host whereas the destination port number is associated with the destination application on the remote host. So basically kalau kita adalah the sending party, the source port is ours and the destination port is the remote host. Combination of the source IP address and the source port number or the destination IP address and the destination port number is also known as a socket address. So dengan cara ni lah kita boleh multiplexkan berbagai-bagai jenis data daripada multiple applications in one transmission. So kita tengok kategori port number. Okay, so ada well-known port number uh, which is from 0 to 1023. So this is reserved for common or popular services and applications. So well-known port number ni kita boleh tengok lah senarai. Uh, for example from Wikipedia. Next we have registered ports number 1024 to 49,151. Yang ini IANA dah reserve untuk apa-apa application yang contohnya proprietary. For example, kita ada Android, uh, mungkin dia ada satu proses yang proprietary untuk Android platform sahaja. Tetapi kita nak semua orang yang gunakan Android menggunakan port ini. Contoh, eh? so ini uh, Android akan register dengan IANA supaya semua orang lain yang ada application lain tak gunakan port number yang sama. Okay. So these processes are primarily individual applications that a user has chosen to install rather than common applications that would receive a well-known port number. Okay, so contoh lagi dia bagi kat sini, vendor dia adalah Cisco lah. Okay, macam-macam vendor yang ada lah. Finally, we have private or dynamic ports ataupun nama lain dia ephemeral port. So ephemeral ni bermaksud temporary lah. Okay, so mana-mana client ataupun host macam komputer kita sendiri ni yang cuba nak access the application, okay, kita maksudnya kita trying to contact the application server. So, untuk kita sebagai host yang nak access destination uh, well-known server ni, kita akan jadi the client. So, the client akan dapat ephemeral port number sebagai port untuk menandakan proses itu datang daripada kita. So port number ni bila kita perlu hantar data, it's generated randomly or dynamically by our platform ataupun OS. Lepas habis communication kita dengan sesuatu application tu, nombor tu akan dipulangkan balik ke dalam pool lah. Okay. So ini adalah contoh well-known port numbers uh, of the protocol yang biasa kita gunakan and also what kind of transport layer protocol yang digunakan. So for example, we have file transfer protocol, kita gunakan TCP. Okay. And we have for data is 20, for control is 21. Untuk TFTP, uh, FTP kita pakai TCP but for TFTP, short and fast uh, file transfer, kita gunakan UDP, port number 69. 
Some other useful protocols adalah DNS and DHCP. So if you notice, DNS can be used both on UDP and also TCP. Meanwhile, DHCP menggunakan UDP. One of the ways that we can view the established connection of application layer protocol through TCP adalah menggunakan command next step. Okay, so since TCP adalah connection oriented. So sebelum dia nak hantar data, dia kena establish the connection first. Mendapat approval lah uh, daripada destination. So contohlah macam kita sebagai host, kalau server nak hantar data, dia akan establish connection dahulu. Jadi menggunakan command next step ni, kita boleh tengoklah apa application yang sudah establish connection. If there are any suspicious connection, then we know what to do with those connection lah untuk security purposes. This basis is also used dalam kita punya firewall. Okay, mungkin you akan belajar lebih lagi nanti lah mengenai firewall. Next, let's look at the TCP communication process. So, kita ada satu server yang run dua application. Satu adalah HTTP, satu adalah SMTP. So, in order for the server to differentiate these two running processes adalah dengan menggunakan port number. Itulah kegunaan port number tu. Jadi, sebagai server, dia akan allocate dengan well-known port number. For example, untuk HTTP server, The port number will be 80 and untuk SMTP, the port number will be 25. So, this server will have this well-known port number as its own source port number. Bila kita enablekan this HTTP dengan SMTP services, kita akan kata bahawa the server is open. Uh, open maksudnya it is open for any communication request daripada mana-mana client. So, bila client nak access the services of this server, for example, client 1 wants to access the HTTP services. Contohlah, dia sedang browse sesuatu website uh, of this server. Alright. Uh, so, the OS ataupun platform dekat client 1, dia akan generatekan a ephemeral port number untuk hantar communication kepada server. So, this ephemeral port number lah uh, yang jadi source port number bagi client 1. Sama juga dengan SMTP for client 2 is trying to contact the server as an email server. So, the platform or OS of client 2 juga akan generate an ephemeral port number bila dia try to communicate to the server. Ha, jadi, contohlah dekat sini kita ada 49152. Ha, kan? Itulah port number yang digunakan untuk communicate dengan server dan menandakan bahawa this is a communication between an HTTP client and an HTTP server. So, sebelum dia boleh send and receive data, okay, kita ada proses connection establishment. Jadi, dekat client tadilah contoh that is trying to request a specific web page. Uh, the TCP process dekat client akan try to establish connection dahulu. So, dia akan hantar a three-way handshake process starting with a scene segment yang ini. Okay. It will send a scene segment. Scene ni apa? Scene ni lah ada synchronization. So, kita akan letak dekat flag. Uh, dekat control flag dalam TCP header mengatakan ini adalah scene segment. Pada masa yang sama, dia akan create satu sequence number untuk start the conversation. Okay, so bila B, uh, whether it is a client or a server, okay, because it's full duplex, it can be both a client and a server. Bila the receiver receive the scene segment, if it is ready, dia akan hantar another scene segment and also an acknowledgement. So, proses ini dipanggil piggybacking. Piggyback. Okay. Maksudnya, dia buat dua tugas dalam satu masa. 
dia hantar scene segment daripada diri dia dan juga dia acknowledge scene segment daripada A. So B juga sebagai starter of this scene segment akan create satu sequence number. Okay. And then it will acknowledge. So like I said, the acknowledgement number is cumulative. Kalau sequence number daripada A adalah 100, dia akan tambah satu kepada sequence number itu dan hantar sebagai acknowledgement number. Okay. So now... <coughs> Uh, A dah receive acknowledgement daripada B. Ini bermaksud both A and B are ready to send and receive data. Kemudian A akan acknowledge scene daripada B. Okay. So in this case, sequence number dia masih 101. Okay. Sebab dia nak acknowledge daripada B dan kita panggil ni ini sebagai rules ya. The act Segment does not consume any sequence number if it is not carrying data. So, kita boleh juga piggybackkan segmen ini. Contohnya, kita hantar acknowledgement segment dan juga kita hantar data. Ha, tapi, uh, kalau kita tak hantar data sekali, uh, sequence number masih kekal 101 manakala acknowledgement number is cumulative. So, it is acknowledging this sequence number so dia akan jadi 301 so this is the three way handshaking process selepas ini A dan B bolehlah send and receive normal data bila dah habis hantar data kita ada pula session termination ataupun connection termination so this is called a three way or a four-way connection termination. So, kalau client A dah tak ada data untuk dihantar, so dia nak close the connection, dia akan hantar a fin segment. Kalau client B masih ada data, okay, dia akan hantar acknowledgement. Okay, maksudnya dia dah settle terima data daripada A tapi B masih ada data nak hantar. Dia akan hantar acknowledgement dulu untuk acknowledge this fin segment dan dia akan finish sending data here at this point of time. Okay. Kemudian selepas dia dah habis hantar dia, data dia pula, dia akan hantar fin segment daripada diri dia pula. So, maksudnya dua-dua A dan B sudah hantar fin segment. Both of them have finished sending data. Okay. So, A akan acknowledge pula fin daripada B. Okay. So, in this manner, kita ada empat four-way handshaking. Ha, ada lagi satu cara called three-way handshaking. Di mana kalau B dah habis hantar data. So, A dah habis hantar data, dia kata fin. B pun dah habis hantar data, dia boleh buat konsep piggyback juga. Dia hantar act plus fin within one segment. And uh, A akan hantar fin segment untuk balas fin ini. Okay, so itu dinamakan three-way connection termination. Okay, so uh, connection termination boleh sama ada three-way ataupun four-way. So like I said, this uh, three-way or four-way handshaking and connection termination uh, is being controlled by this control bits. Di sinilah kita ada beberapa flag, satu urgent pointer, satu acknowledgement, satu push, satu reset, satu sin dan satu lagi fin. So untuk three-way or four-way itu kita akan enable kan these flags, act, sin and fin. Uh, yang lain, contohnya urgent, push and reset adalah untuk sending of data and also to reset the connection when there is an error or a time out. Next, let's look at TCP's reliability and flow control. So, we already know that TCP maintains reliability dengan menggunakan retransmission mechanisms. 
So salah satu cara untuk retransmission mechanism ni adalah dengan menggunakan acknowledgement. So for example here A is trying to send segments 1 through 10. Tetapi segmen 3 dan 4 adalah lost. Okay, dengan adanya acknowledgement mechanism and we know that the acknowledgement adalah cumulative. Bila dia hantar act 3 bermaksud this B is expect, expecting segment 3. Daripada situ A tahu bahawa uh, B tak terima lah. Uh, okay, B tak terima segment 3. So it will start resending again from segment 3. So dia akan hantar semula daripada segment 3 sehingga 10. Okay, so walaupun dia dah terima yang ini tadi. Jadi B ni hanya akan ignore lah segmen 5 hingga 10 yang duplicate ini. No problem. Ha, sebab dia dah terima the first copy. Now bila dia nak bagi tahu A, oh, saya dah terima dah ni. So dia hanya akan terus dengan hantar acknowledgement sequence number 11. Ha, itu cara dia. So it's very good to signal to both A and B about the data loss and how to make sure the source will retransmit. So remember dekat CCP header kita ada option dan dalam option tu salah satu benda yang kita gunakan adalah kita hantar selective acknowledgement. So depending on the platform used by the uh, sender and receiver, kalau both support selective acknowledgement in their TCP protocol stack, jadi dia boleh hantar negotiation lah untuk kata let's use selective acknowledgement. Bila ada selective acknowledgement, kalau berlaku data loss, okay, so dia akan gunakan field selective acknowledgement untuk bagi tahu what are the fields that you do not need to send. So, bila dia kata act 3, maksudnya dia perlukan segmen 3 dan seterusnya. Okay, tetapi dia ada addendum kat sini, ada option sec 5 to 10. Maksudnya saya dah terima lah. Segmen 5 hingga 10 tak perlulah retransmit. In this manner, A knows which segments to send. So, dia hanya hantar 3, 4 dan juga since 5, 10 dah diterima, dia pun boleh terus hantar segmen 11 dan 12. Next, kita tengok TCP flow control. So, this mechanism is done by using the window size and also acknowledgement field. So both A and B uh, as the sender and receiver keeps track of their window size. So during the three-way handshake, maksudnya A and B dah bersetuju untuk send and receive data, B akan bagi tahu dia punya available resource lah. So, so for example, uh, it's able to process 10,000 bytes. The maximum segment size is 1,460 bytes. So this is the maximum size of the segment. So now A is ready to send data. So let's say it starts the sequence number with 1. So since the maximum transfer size is 1,460, so it will send the whole segment size 1,460. <coughs> So B will keep track of the data received. It has received up until now, byte number 1 until byte number 1,460. <coughs> Next, maksudnya dekat sini buffer ni masih lagi uh, tak penuh lah. Okay, daripada 10,000 dia hanya baru terima 1,460. So <coughs> A masih lagi boleh hantar daripada byte number 1,461 until byte number 2920. So B now uh, accepts uh, this data in its table to process without uh, filling the buffer. So it will still say, okay, I'm still ready to process data. My window size is still 10,000. <coughs> so A will continue to send data. Okay. And let's say lah dalam example ni dia masih boleh proses. Let's say kat sini B masih slow in processing this data. Uh, so mungkin uh, uh, 1,460 bytes ni 
uh, dia tak boleh proses. So it will send a new window size here lah. So it can send 10,000 minus 1,460 uh, as the new window size value. In this case, A dah tahulah tak boleh hantar data yang melebihi that particular value. So inilah caranya untuk kita make sure A akan hantar data mengikut speed yang boleh diproses oleh B. So macam mana dapat number 1460 tu uh, which is the maximum segment size. This is got uh, uh, provided through 1500 which is the maximum transfer unit for Ethernet. <coughs> <coughs> and we minus the <coughs> header in the IP and the TCP layer. So, kita ada <coughs> 20 for IPv4 and 20 for TCP. Ah, uh, This is assuming kita tak ada option lah. Okay, so <coughs> 1500 minus 40 bytes, we get 1460 bytes. Next, let's look at UDP communication. So the characteristics of UDP is that it is unreliable. Okay, so walaupun begitu, dia sesuai untuk protokol yang menggunakan uh, low overhead untuk dia hantar data dengan cepat. So again, we reiterate characteristic of UDP. It does not have any sequence number. So there is no way of tracking the UDP segments and it has no way to reorder the datagrams. <laughs> sebab dia tak ada sequence number and it simply reassembles the data in the order that it was received and forward to the application layer. Untuk UDP, dia masih menggunakan well port number, a well known port number as the server and menggunakan ephemeral or temporary port number untuk client. So for example here, kita ada server yang offer DNS services. So the server will have the well-known port number 53 while the client will have the ephemeral port number. Uh, so contoh di sini 1812. So the client number will be <coughs> randomly selected by the uh, iOS ataupun the OS lah, the platform. So that's it for transport layer communication.